Welcome all my friends to Maria's 100 subscriber hop. Thank you guys for being here today. I hope you guys enjoy and hop along with us and make sure that you like, subscribe, and leave us a comment because you know there will be prizes. We would love to thank Maria for this and we hope that she continues to grow and she's already soared past this 100 mark so I know she's going to do so amazing. All right, so let's get into what we're going to be doing today. So her theme was strength and kindness. And you know, I really think that with all of our card making things, one of the big things with us card makers is the idea of kindness. So I wanted to come in today and do a thinking of you card. And I'm going to bring in this all to new, uh, background cover plate um, and this is a, a A2 size and I'm going to bring in my cuddle bug because I'm going to try to do something a little unorthodox because you guys know I am a 5x7 girl. So I'm going to bring in some stick it adhesive and I'm going to pull that stick it adhesive out and put it um, over the top of this cardstock. Now the cardstock that I am using is some watercolor paper because of the die cutting that I'm using and because I do not want my cover plate to cut all the way through my um, cardstock. I'm using a heavier weight so that I just get a really good impression. And so I've kind of covered the whole front with that uh, stick it adhesive and now I have the adhesive side up and I'm putting my cover plate over that and I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine and then once I run it through the die cutting machine I'm going to shift it down and run it through again and now when I'm doing my die cutting I'm leaving a little edge at the bottom of the cover plate so that it does not cut all the way through because I want to keep this as one whole sheet of paper and I'm trying to make this look like a continuous pattern, I'm not going to take my top plate all the way down to cover. So that small area, the cuddle bug will not cut in that area. So here I have that part done. I'm just going to shift my uh, cover plate down to the bottom and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to run it through and I'm not gonna cover it. And once we get done, this is what we come up with. Now, because of the way that I did it, I did end up with a little bit of a line through the center, but that's okay. So I'm going to bring in some embossing powders and forget me not blue, the steel navy and the Brutus Monroe gilded. And so remember we have the stick it adhesive on the top with the release paper. So all I'm going to do is I am going to start working on these leaves and I know you can't really see it now but you will see it in a few moments and I'm just peeling away the release uh, paper from each feather that I want and I'm going kind of in a systematic way so I'm doing the first one from the first line the second one on the second line the third one on the third line and then coming back up as you can see here so I'm going to pour heat um, embossing powder all over that and because I've only released the paper from this portion of the uh, cover plate that's the only place that the embossing powder is going to stick so I did that with the forget me not and now I'm going to go through and I'm going to release another area. So I'm just releasing like the second one on this on the first line, the third one on the second line, the first one on the third line and so forth and so on. And I'm creating a pattern here and we're going to do the same thing all over again except this time I'm going to be using the blue which is a little bit darker than the forget me not. So then once I do the, for the uh, blue color, we're going to go ahead and we're going to heat emboss that again. And I'm not heat embossing this a whole lot at the beginning. I'm just getting everything melted because I'm heat embossing so many different times. So now for this third time, I'm going to release all of the other feather portions. Now remember, I still have the outline piece that I'm going to do in that gilded color. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna release the all the other feather portions. And this time I'm gonna come in with that Simon Says Stamp uh, Steel Navy embossing powder and I will have all of this linked in the description box below as well as all the information for the hop the next person who's on the hop I will link to Maria's YouTube channel please make sure you go and check her out and all the information for the giveaways and what you need to do in order to enter so now I'm going to go in with that navy and this is going to cover the remainder of the images now this does not have to be perfect i was kind of going for a rustic type of look not necessarily rustic but i wasn't so meticulous with it um and it to me it came out very pretty there were a couple of places that i got maybe like a blue speck into the forget me not but it all turned out really really well um, in the end so here is our last part for the background piece I am going to be pulling up all of the background here and I'm just taking my time and pulling away all the rest of the release paper to um, get some of this sticky adhesive um, to show and I saw this technique for the first time I think Jennifer McGuire did it a couple of years ago and I thought this was so amazing I absolutely loved it so I thought that I would bring back an old school technique I guess um, for you guys today now this does not the adhesive does not go all the way to the to the edge and that's by design just so that I have a place on the edge to hold on to so that I can do my heat embossing and you can see that somehow I got this white streak down the paper where it was not adhering any embossing powder but that's okay as well we're going to be able to fix that I'm going to bring in my uh, Versa marker pen and I'm going to use that to uh, cover up some of those places that are um, still lacking color and this is what we end up with once we get done with all of our heat embossing so now I have cut down my panel to um, a little bit less than a five by seven uh, panel it's four and three quarters by six and three quarters and then I cut off another little edge I was going to use that on the inside but I ended up not using it I have also gone into my Cricut and cut out a thinking of you shadow as well as the actual word thinking of you three times and of course vinyl for the top I have my card base and I have two card mats and then I have the inside card panel and again I'm going to be bringing in this um, moments of grace stamp set from Simon Says Stamp I've been using this over the last week or so and I'm really really loving it and then I'm going to bring in this stamp set from Simon Says Stamp as well and I just absolutely loved these flowers that are right there um, and I wanted to use them I bought this stamp set probably about a year ago and I had not really used it and the stamp set is called earth has music but I'll have that in the description box as well and so now what I brought in is all of my alcohol ink items I bought in some heavyweight Yupo and I brought in a mixture of some greens some blues and yellows um, for my colors as well as some blending solution and some 91 percent isopropyl alcohol i know that is a hot commodity these days so i did use it sparingly so what i'm going to do is i brought out an entire sheet of this uh yupo paper i'm going to start out by saturating my paper a little bit with the alcohol and I'm going to start with the yellow up at the top. So the reason that I brought in the green was not so much that I was looking for a green color, but more so because I didn't want the yellow and the blue to mix together and make brown. So I needed kind of a in-between color to kind of help meld those together. And I'm just sitting here playing like I promise you guys I played for probably a good 40 minutes in here with this one panel. I absolutely love working with alcohol inks. They are so pretty. They're just so amazing the way that they move. And when you add something, what is it going to do? And then this new uh, air spritzer from Tim Holtz 
is even more fun, you know, because now I don't have to blow through a straw as much. Although you get another effect when you do the straw method and another effect when you use the um, blending tools or the little spritzers and things like that. And I'm going to do another video soon that is just playing with alcohol inks and alcohol pearls and the different uh, mixatives and the alloys and the new ones from this year um, just so that we can look at all the different alcohol inks. So if that's something that you guys are looking forward to, please make sure you let me know in the comments below. So we're just going to get that finished up and I just wanted to take a second and to tell you guys how amazingly impressed I am with Maria and her channel. She has been doing some really, really awesome things and she is really growing and learning and loving it. She really, really loves this crafting community. The crafting community loves her. She is such a kind heart. And she is going to be doing her giveaways, but not only is she doing giveaways, but she's also going to be doing a donation to one of her favorite charities, which I think is absolutely amazing. So you guys make sure you check out my description box. I'm going to have all this information listed for you guys so that you guys can see all of the things that Maria has in store for you guys. Um, and I hope that you guys will hop along and see everything that is on this uh kindness hop for maria and make sure that you go over to her channel and especially show her some love so we finished up this panel and this is kind of what we got and i let that sit and dry i brought in a piece of plastic with it just because it was still a little tacky on the back probably from sitting on the glass mat and not being able to dry, but I just didn't want it to cause any discoloration to my mat. I'm gonna bring in some Versamark Dazzle uh, ink and I'm going to bring in the Brutus Monroe Raven Sparkle Embossing Powder. And I'm going to, of course, bring in my anti-static powder tool. So now I'm going to bring my stamp set out. And what I have decided is that I want to stamp all four of these stamps all four of the feathers in different areas on this um on this alcohol ink piece so of course like i said i wasn't really interested in the green color i just needed it as a transition color for me so i went ahead and i sliced that panel in half so that it would fit nicely into my misty and i'm going to stamp the first two um, by getting them layered where i want them to be and now I'm going to very, 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 very generously hit it with my anti-static powder tool. Once I do that, I'm going to saturate it with my Versamark Dazzle and then I am going to stamp it out with the stamping platform. Now the reason that I'm using the Misty is because you can stamp that more than once but you don't want to press down terribly hard with these stamps because they're pretty fine lined and we want all of those nice details to show so now i've done that and i am going to sprinkle over my embossing powder and then i'm going to bring my heat tool to it now i've had my heat tool heating up on the side while I was doing all of this and you want to keep your heat tool moving 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 this heavyweight Yupo paper can take some heat but it will start to buckle and curl if you keep it on there too much so now we have done all of our images they came out so beautiful like I loved this and I'm going to fussy cut it because these have some very intricate uh areas I decided to go ahead and fussy cut these versus putting them in through my scan and cut and all I'm doing is kind of creating a border around it as a whole I'm not really going in and being really fussy with my fussy cutting I'm just creating a little bit of a border all the way around and trying to show where the feathers are curving in and out and it seemed to work out pretty well so I did that with all four of of the feathers and then what I'm going to do is we will go on to begin putting our card together once we are done with our fussy cutting.
I really, really think that this was really awesome the way it came out. I really enjoyed it. So I decided with that last feather that I initially wasn't going to use that I was going to take that one and I was going to put it on the inside of my card. So I have decided that I want to use two sentiments on the inside of these um of this card and the first sentiment that I'm going to use is going to be kind of the scripty one that says that um praying praying for you and then I am going to use the sentiment that says may you be comforted by the beauty of memories your strong faith and my prayers for your healing during this very difficult time and i really love that i think that this stamp set is just like so encouraging i'm sure i'll be using it a lot so once i got done with that i went ahead and brought in those thinking of you pieces and i stacked them up and put them on top of the shadow piece and once i am done with that you can see that I'm going in and getting my thinking of you that is um, done in white vinyl. So I have the white vinyl. It's got a little bit of a blue outline to tie in the base and then it has the black shadow. So now I'm starting to fuss because I don't know how I want the layout of the front of the card to be. Do I want it to be like this uh, or do I want to change it around and put it here? Or do I want to take it and put them like this? I couldn't remember this one, but I think I really liked it that way. Or do I want to do it a different way? So I'm sitting in here fussing and I have my 16 year old in here. And in a few moments, you're gonna see some different hands come in with his expertise as to how he felt like the card should go. So I'm gonna show you guys what I wanted and then I'm gonna he's gonna show you what he wanted and we will see. You guys let us know which one of us were on the better track with this. I was also laughing with my kids because I just thought that it would be so funny if you guys could hear the conversations that go on in here while I'm crafting. It is hilarious sometimes. I may have to do a break in at some point. So I'm just sitting here fussing and fiddling, fiddling and fussing. Please excuse my dog because he's fussing and fiddling right now. Um, and I am kind of thinking of how I want this to be and you can see like I'm really really over here just kind of going 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 I don't know how I want it um, and I'm loving it but I want it to just make the statement I don't know if that makes sense I don't know if you guys ever deal with that but I just wanted it to make the statement I know kind of where I want the sentiment to be I like the sentiment in this right hand corner right there um, in that seam area but I'm not sure about the positions of the feathers so I'm just I really wanted you guys to get to see like this is what happens in our craft rooms I don't think that a lot of times you guys see this part of it I know that sometimes you think that cards just come together so so easily without any problems and we just have this imagination so here comes him putting his hands in and trying to figure out how he wants them to be placed so he thinks that this is going to be the better way to do the um the card so okay that's his way what do you guys think so then i am going to go ahead and go with it so let me know if i made a good choice by listening to the 16 year old so now we're going to take some score tape and some foam tape so i have the sentiment on score tape i have the first feather on score tape the yellow feather i have on one layer of foam tape and the second blue feather i put on two layers of foam tape so there's a lot of dimension and a lot of shine going on with this card and so now i'm just doing the placement one last time to make sure that i have everything exactly the way that it's supposed to be and i am going to go ahead and make that final decision and start adhering everything down so i'm going to go ahead and put down that thinking of you um i put the feather that is behind 
behind it first because I wanted it to sit toward the back and then I'm going to go ahead and pop on my other two feathers now when I'm doing my other two feathers I don't press down on them until I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure and that's just because it allows you to move it around just a little bit um, if you don't press down on that foam tape before you are sure where you want that to be so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mat my inside panel onto its mat and then I'm going to glue that onto the actual card base and this card base is made of Re recollection 100 pound cardstock you know I've told you guys before that that's what I use when I'm not doing any type of inking or blending and then I'm going to do my front panel and guys that is it again I hope you guys will hop along I hope that you guys enjoyed I hope that you guys will like subscribe comment if you like what you're seeing, please make sure you come back and visit me. I really do enjoy you guys, and I hope that you guys have an amazing day. And again, please make sure you guys go by and show Maria some love and tell her congratulations, congratulations, congratulations on her first of many, many, many milestones to come. Okay, bye-bye.